Do you know that there's over 60,000 miles of blood vessels in your body? Your heart pumps over 2,000 gallons of blood a day and your aorta is the size of a garden hose. So these facts you probably won't need to know for your medical coding exams, but today let's go over what you might need to know in our cardiovascular medical coding review. Hey everyone, I'm Victoria. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, content creator, and national speaker. And on my channel, I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in a medical coding career. If you're new and you need more medical coding information, I would highly encourage you to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get alerts when I post new medical coding education content, fun information, career tips, interviews, and do live Q and A. We're gonna start this off like we have a lot of our other chapters and that's just by going over what's in CPT. Now, a lot of times we think maybe the 30,000 section is all cardiovascular, but it's not. It's respiratory, cardiovascular, heme and lymph. Now, cardiovascular does take over a large section of that and you have to be much more careful with cardiovascular versus some other sections because in cardiovascular, there's not like that nice repetitious pattern in it like we see in some of the other systems where it's like, oh, here's the body organ. And then we have incision, excision, repair, reconstruction, uh, endoscopy, what have you. There is a lot of different things that go on with the heart. So there isn't that same sort of pattern that we have where maybe for like musculoskeletal, we kind of start with our head and then we go down to our toes in our in our uh, order that we see. And then it's the incision, excision, et cetera. So with cardiovascular, it's very different. And one of the focuses for cardiovascular, I really want to emphasize is look over the guidelines in CPT a couple of times because even though it might be impossible for you to memorize every single thing verbatim because you're gonna be trying to memorize a lot of things, right? Um, if you're getting a question on your exam that's on something pertaining to the cardiovascular system, you're at least wanna be familiar enough with those guidelines that you can quick scan them and go, oh yeah, that's right, that's what this particular guideline is. I can add a 59 modifier on this additional procedure and bill it in these circumstances, but not for these ones. So that's where you want to, you know, people have opinions about, you know, oh, well, it, it, do I really need to read the book? Kind of, yeah. I mean, it is a book and you should read through the book. Um, in addition to just being know how to, util to utilize it, you should actually read through it um, a couple of times. So we start with the heart and pericardium, and then we're going into pericardium, cardiac tumors, transmyocardial revascularization, pacemaker or implantable defibrillators, which we'll talk about, electrophysiological operative procedures, the incisions and the endoscopies, subcutaneous cardiac rhythm monitors, implantable hemodynamic monitors, heart, including valves and great vessels. And then we have cardiac valves, aortic valves, mitral valve, tricuspid valve, and pulmonary valve, other valvular procedures, coronary artery anomalies, endoscopy, venous grafting only for coronary artery bypass. Then we go into combined arterial venous grafting for coronary bypass, arterial grafting for coronary artery bypass, coronary and arterectomies, single ventricle and other complex cardiac anomalies, septal defect, sinus of Valsalva, venous anomalies, shunting procedures, transposition of the great vessels, truncus arteriosus, aortic anomalies, thoracic aortic aneurysm, endovascular repair of transcending thoracic aorta, pulmonary artery, heart and lung transplantation, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation or extracorporeal life support services, cardiac assist and other procedures. And then we have here arteries and veins, lots of different stuff for arteries and veins. So embolectomies and thrombectomies, arterial and venous with or without catheters, direct, etc. Venous reconstruction, endovascular repair of abdominal aorta or iliac arteries, fenestrated endovascular repair of the visceral and infrarenal aorta, endovascular repair of iliac aneurysm, direct repair of the aneurysm or excision, partial or total and graft insertion for aneurysm, pseudoaneurysm, ruptured aneurysm, and associated occlusive disease, and then repair of an AV fistula, repair of blood vessels other than for fistula with or without path, patch angioplasty, 
thromboendarterectomy, angioscopy, bypass grafts, vein in situ vein, and other than vein, and we'll go over one of those as well, Compa uh, composite grafts, adjuvant techniques, arterial transposition, excision exploration, repair or revision, vascular injection procedures, so intravenous, intraarterial, intraaortic, venous, central venous access procedures, so insertion of a central venous access device, repair and then replacement of those access devices, complete replacement, removal of them, other central venous access device procedures, and then we have arterial, intraosseous, hemodialysis access, intravascular cannulation for extracorporeal circulation or shunt insertion, dialysis circuit, portal decompression procedures, transcatheter procedures, arterial mechanical thrombectomy, venous mechanical thrombectomy, and then we have here other procedures. So our endovascular revascularization, vascular embolization and occlusion, intravascular ultrasound services, endoscopy, ligation, other. And that's when we now start getting out of the cardiovascular section. So into our spleen excision repair, laparoscopy introduction. So now this is looking a little bit more like the rest of CPT. So bone marrow or stem cell services, and then transplant and post-transplant cellular infusions, lymph nodes, incision, excision, uh, laparoscopy, radial lymphadectomy, introduction, other mediastinum, incision, excision, endoscopy, other, and then diaphragm repair and other procedures. Chapter nine of ICD-10-CM is where you see most of those cardiovascular related procedures because that's diseases of the circulatory system. So acute rheumatic fever, chronic rheumatic heart disease, hypertensive diseases, ischemic heart diseases, pulmonary heart disease and diseases of pulmonary circulation, other forms of heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, diseases of the arteries, arterioles, and capillaries, diseases of veins, lymphatic vessels, and lymph nodes not elsewhere classified, and other and unspecified diseases of the circulatory system. So one of the key things that you really want to understand with cardiovascular coding is our correlations between hypertension, chronic kidney disease, and heart failure. That's a big one that comes up in a lot of the exams is that correlation because you might see a provider that says diagnosis one, hypertension, diagnosis two, end stage renal disease, diagnosis three is uh, congestive heart failure, but those don't get coded individually. There's not, not, we don't start with that hypertension and assign a code I-10 because there's some assumed cause and effect relationships based on ICD-10 CM coding guidance. So if we look at our ICD-10-CM official guidelines for coding and reporting for chapter nine, which is diseases of the circulatory system, the first thing it's gonna tell you is about hypertension. And if you have the AAPC version, they have a really great grid that you can use here about hypertension with heart disease and hypertension with chronic kidney disease, because there's an assumed cause and effect relationship. So it says here that the classification presumes a causal relationship between hypertension and heart involvement and between hypertension and kidney involvement. So for example, if we have hypertension and heart disease, even if the provider's not calling it hypertensive heart disease, if they say diagnosis one, hypertension, diagnosis two, congestive heart failure, that fits within those classifications of I-50 or I-51.4 through I-51.7, and then these diagnoses here as well. Instead of using I-10, we use I-11, hypertensive heart disease. Now this isn't a true combination code because even though we have the I-11 that says hypertensive heart disease, we still wanna quantify what kind of heart disease was it. So that portion of it also needs to be an additional code. What kind of heart disease was it? So we need this additional code from the I-50. Same thing with chronic kidney disease. If the patient has hypertension and let's say end-stage renal disease, which is code N18.6, that would be coded not as I-10, but is I-12. I-12 is hypertensive chronic kidney disease, but we still wanna know the stage of that chronic kidney disease, right? Because that combination code just says hypertensive chronic kidney disease, it doesn't tell us the stage. So we still need one of our end codes to tell us that that, what is the stage of that chronic kidney disease. Now, the nice thing about that is if you go into this code I-12, which we'll do right now, ICD-10-CM will help you out. So if you're looking at this I-12 and you're about to assign it, it'll go, hey, wait a second, uh, you need to tell us uh, what is the stage of the chronic kidney disease. So in here, I-12.0 is hypertensive chronic kidney disease with stage five or end stage renal disease, but you still need to use that additional code 
to identify the stage of the chronic kidney disease. Is it N18.5 or N18.6? So you need to identify what that stage is. So this is stage one through stage four, but you still need to use that ENCODE. So it's telling you here, use the additional code to identify that stage of chronic kidney disease. Now, if that patient has all three, they have hypertension, they have heart disease, and they have chronic kidney disease, then you don't use uh, I-10, you don't use I-11, you don't use I-12, you use I-13. But then again, an additional code for quantifying what is the heart failure, and then a code to quantify the stage of the chronic kidney disease. And again, if you look up I-13, it'll give you that directive to use those additional codes. CPT has two full pages of guidelines just for pacemakers and implantable defibrillators. And that's important reading material. That's stuff that you need to get familiar with because if you get a question on that, you want to be familiar enough with the guidelines to at least quickly abstract that guideline to confirm, oh yeah, I can add this with the 59 modifier. I can't, this is included, this is not included. The other thing is that there is a short sheet in green because it's a guideline that you might find helpful if you're coding for pacemakers. So some of the key things that you're going to be looking for here are things like, is this the initial? Is this a insertion? Is it a replacement? Is it a replacement plus insertion? Is this um, how many leads are involved? That can be a, a, a key factor in there. So make sure that you're familiar with this grid as well. So coronary angioplasty is used to open up clogged hearts and it includes things like temporary insertion of a balloon that they then inflate that helps uh, remove that clogged area of the artery by widening that artery. And it improves things like the shortness of breath and that chest pain that people can develop when they have a blocked artery. Or if a patient has a heart attack, it can reduce the amount of damage that is caused from the heart because of that blockage. For coding for the moderate sedation, some of the components you have to look at are potentially the patient's age, the time that was involved, and then if the provider is the same one that is also providing a diagnostic or therapeutic service, because in those cases it may or may not be included. One thing that comes up a lot in the study material and I feel like is a higher chance of appearing on your questions in the exam is the circulation of the blood through the heart. Now you actually don't have to memorize this if you don't want to, because this appears in your CPT book. If you look in your table of contents for your cardiovascular procedures, there is a picture of the heart there and it shows you through the diagram, what is the blood flow of the heart? Now, if you want it in words, you can also write the word component of where the oxygenated blood, etc., goes through, through the heart so that you have that as well. So the right atrium receives the oxygen poor blood from the body and pumps it to the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. And then the right ventricle pumps the oxygen poor blood to the lungs through the pulmonary valve. The left atrium receives oxygen-rich blood from the lungs and pumps it to the left ventricle through the mitral valve, and then the left ventricle pumps the oxygen-rich blood through the aortic valve out to the rest of the body. Now again, not saying this is something you will see on the exam, but based off of how often it seems to come up in the study material, it's something that I feel would then be more likely to show up in that pool of questions that they use for the exam, right? Arteries and veins. Now the arteries and veins of the circulatory system are listed in your CPT book right after that table of contents, just like the blood flow of the heart. And it's important to note that you can also find the illustrations of the vascular families in Appendix L of your CPT book. So that's towards the back, not as far back as the index is, but in those appendices sections. So it's important to understand that it's there because that will give you further information about those vascular families if you get a question about them or if you have something that you're trying to code that pertains to understanding the vascular families. So now let's get into our coding scenarios and I'll work through these with you. This particular one, a 62 year old patient is getting increasingly tired during daily living activities. And at times they are feeling short of breath and experiencing instances of rapid heartbeats. The patient is determined to require a pacemaker implantation. A single lead pacemaker is implanted 
with a ventricular lead. So we have four options here, 33213, 33210, 33208, and 33207. So we could do our methodology where we just go to the sections that say 332, it looks like, and those are probably gonna be all within the same pages, right, within a page or two of each other because they're pretty close in numerical order. Um, or we could look at our index, or we could go to our pacemakers and try and find it that way. So let's look first at some of the key things we wanna abstract from this. So first we're doing a pacemaker implantation. We talked about how we need to know for those, how many leads we're doing, right? So this is a single lead. It's being implanted with a ventricular lead. And that might be something, what kind of lead are we doing? So we have a pacemaker implant, single lead, ventricular. Those are the key things I'm gonna start looking for. Now in this case, they're just giving us CPT code, so we're not gonna worry about the ICD-10-CM code. We're not gonna talk about those ICD-10-CM codes. We're just focusing for this question on CPT coding. So if we go to pacemaker, here we have pacemaker insertion, pacemaker system with leads, insertion, lead, 33207 to 33208, and then it gives us these two other codes, right? So we're gonna start looking at these first ones and see if those are, and then we have to look at these two. So the other way we could do this again was just to kind of look at these codes if we have our multiple choice. But let's start with this 33206, 33208 first. So 33206 is insertion of new or replacement of permanent pacemaker with transvenous electrodes, arterial. That's not what we did, we did ventricular. Oh, here we go, ventricular, 33207. So insertion of new or replacement of permanent pacemaker with transvenous electrodes, ventricular. So that sounds like we, what we did. So 33207 is our contender. 33208 is one of our options, arterial and ventricular, nope. 33213 with existing, no. Uh, 33210 is our other option. 33210, insertion or replacement of temporary transvenous chamber, yeah, that's not anything on separate procedure, nope, per pacemaker catheter. That's not anything that we have in this one. So this is 33207. So there we go, answer D, 33207, that's that pacemaker implantation single lead ventricular. Next, in the cath lab from a right femoral artery access, the following procedures are performed. Catheter placed in the left renal accessory renal superior to the left renal and one main right renal artery. Radiological supervision and imaging are performed in all locations. What CPT code should be utilized? And we have a variety here. It looks like if we look at A and B, like B and C have a lot of different codes on here. So we might be looking at trying to piece together are these bundling issues or not. Do you see that there? Like we're here we have, we're unbundling with a 59 and we're doing an RT and a 59 and an LT and then we have a 59 here and a 59. And then we have one that's the 20, you know, these 26s, which is professional component only. Radiological supervision and imaging are performed in all locations. Supervision and imaging. Hmm. So let's kind of piece this together. So if we go into CPT, we can see here selective catheter placement, main renal artery and accessory renal arteries. And there's like bilateral. We have, what is the four, five, three, six, two, four, five. Two, four, five is selective catheter placement arterial system each first other abdominal pelvic or lower extremity artery branch within a vascular family first other abdominal well where are we in here so we're in here this is renal this is renal and we're in the left renal and we're in the right renal right renal and it says here this includes the supervision and the imaging so if we look at some of our codes here, this 36252, selective catheter placement, first order, main renal artery. Yeah, that's what we got, the main renal artery, main right renal artery, and any accessory renal artery. Do we have, yep, accessory renal. And then for renal angiography, including arterial puncture and catheter placement. Yep, 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 that's what we're doing. We're doing catheter placement. 
Um, fluoroscopy, contrast injection, imaging, post-processing, permanent recording of images, and radiological supervision and interpretation, including pressure gradient measurements when performed, and flush arteriogram when performed unilateral. Oh, well, we didn't do unilateral. We did right and left. So this is bilateral, right? So bilateral, 36252. Uh, so if we look at this option A, it's wanting us to bill unilateral and bilateral. So that one I don't think is right because we're not gonna bill a unilateral and a bilateral. And this one we have one with the LT, one with the LT and a 59. That doesn't seem right. And then RT and then 75774. So this 75774 is angiography selective. Each additional vessel studied after basic examination, radiological supervision and interpretation. So radiological supervision and interpretation, but that's already included in this code. So here it says here, and radiological supervision and interpretation. So that's already included in these codes. So we wouldn't code separately for that additional 7-7 additional seven, seven code. So this one's out. And then this 4-5 code in option C, selective catheter placement arterial system, each first other abdominal, pelvic, or lower extremity artery branch within a vascular family. I don't think that's needed because we're right here in this bilateral renal arteries. So new option C is out. And so in this case, if you wanted to look this up in the index, you would go to angiography and then renal artery, and it would refer you to this code range as well. And that way you can piece together that this was a bilateral procedure. We have the right renal, we have the left renal. And in that case, we would be looking for this bilateral code. So 36252. Next, a 57-year-old patient with atherosclerosis has a femoral femoral bypass graft using Gore-Tex. What CPT codes should be utilized? So in this case, we're just worrying about the CPT and we're gonna look out for the femoral femoral bypass. The Gore-Tex is gonna come into play as well. So we're looking at, is this 35661, 35666, 356, 3558, or 355? Three, three. Okay, so here we go. Let's look at, so this just says the femoral popliteal femoral femoral. Where are we starting here? Let's go back. Uh, subclavian. Okay, so the beginning of some of these bypass graft with other than vein. So other than vein, Gore-Tex is not a native vein. Gore-Tex is actually an artificial material. So this is a bypass graft with other than vein, so that part is right. Now we're just gonna look for that second part. So bypass graft, femoral, femoral. So we're at here, femoral, 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 arterial, femoral. Here's our femoral, femoral. So three, five, six, six, one. So what are these other codes? Six, six is femoral anterior tibial, no. Three, five, 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 eight. So 35558 is also femoral femoral, but this particular code is from a vein. So this is a bicraft gaft with vein. This wasn't with vein, this was a Gore-Tex that we're looking for. So this is other than vein, so this code isn't right. The 33558 and 33553, 35533 would be axillary femoral femoral, and that's not what we did. We did the other than vein, the Gore-Tex femoral femoral bypass graft, which is option A, the 35661. So bypass graft with other than vein, and then femoral femoral. A patient with end-stage renal disease presents to the ambulatory surgical center for a revision of his autogenous radiocephalic fistula that is needed for continued hemodialysis. What CPT code is utilized? Is it 36904, 36832, 36831, or 36825? So what are we going to start with? Let's do this time by looking into our index. So what we're gonna draw out of here is that this is a revision to the autogenous radiocephalic fistula. So what CPT code are we gonna do? We're gonna start here with the arteriovenous fistula. So arteriovenous fistula, we're up here. And 
and we are doing a revision of this. That's what we're doing. Not a repair, but a revision. Are we doing a thrombectomy? Nope. We are doing without thrombectomy. So th three, six, oops, three, six, eight, three, two. So revision open. Yep, revision open for arteriovenous fistula. Yep, without thrombectomy. Nope, there's nothing in here about us taking out a thrombus. Autogenous or not autogenous dialysis graft, separate procedure. Um, that looks like it's the right one. So let's look at that. I'm thinking B36832. This 36831 is open without revision. We did a revision, so that's not right. Um, 825. 825 would be a creation and we did a revision, so that's not right. And then that 904. So 36904 percutaneous transluminal mechanical thrombectomy. Again, we didn't do a thrombectomy for this one, so that one's out. So it is definitely our option B, which is our 36832 option. Last question, a patient with angina pectoris has a bilateral angiography of the legs with radiological supervision and interpretation, professional component only. What CPT and ICD-10-CM codes are going to be utilized? So some of the things I wanna abstract out of here, we're gonna be looking at the CPT and ICD-10-CM. So we're, with our ICD-10-CM, we just have angina pectoris. We have nothing other than, is it unstable angina, anything like that, we just have angina pectoris. Now, looking at this, a zero or a nine could both be an unspecified type of code, so that's not gonna indicate anything really there um, as far as if these are going to be eliminated or not. So as far as the CPT, what we wanna look at is this is a bilateral angiography legs, and then it is radiological supervision and interpretation, which is the professional component only. So professional component means that we're probably looking for a 26 modifier unless this particular procedure in the description says that it's only the professional component, in which case we would not need a modifier. But what that does mean is that this one that has the TC modifier, TC is technical component. So right away that's out there because we didn't do the technical component. Technical component is the use of the equipment so that's not what we did here. We're just doing the interpretation of it. So that means we either need a 26 modifier or if that description says professional component only, then we don't need the 26 if it's in the actual procedure description. So let's see what this says because if we look at this, all of these are the same CPT code but different modifiers available. Um, and then some of them have a different diagnosis code. This one's I20.0, this one's I20.9. So let's look at this 75. 716. So 75716, angiography, extremity, bilateral. So that's a key term we have highlighted here, the bilateral, radiological supervision and interpretation. So this doesn't say in the description professional component only. So we need the modifier that says professional component only. So D is out and we're looking at B or C. So the differentiation here is gonna be this I20.0 versus I20.9. So let's pull out our ICD-10-CM manual and we're gonna look at that. So I20.9 is angina pectoris unspecified, so not otherwise specified. The zero looks like it's unstable and we don't have that designation in here of unstable. So in that case, if we're looking at I20.9, what do we got left? Option C. So 75716 with a 26 modifier for the professional component, and then I20.9. So that's it for cardiovascular. Next time we'll be going over the digestive series. Again, if you are watching this right now and you've not seen the other videos, go to the main page. There is an entire playlist of all of the chapter reviews. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, just keep on coding on.